listen, I get it. I know they're comic books, but nobody cares. Like these are adult coloring books with words. I mean, if we're, like, I know you're not here tonight, but like, who cares? I don't care if they're acolyte is high Republic and they have comic books. I don't, I don't read that. You don't read that. I'm, who's gonna. Um, I'm going to have to call you back. Hang on. Chris, what's up, dude? I, you're here. I'm look, your timing is perfect. Look what I was doing. You would be so proud. I'm reading the Vandalheim mission. It's star Wars. It's classic. I love comics. Anybody that tells you otherwise, they're trying to separate us. They're trying to drive a wedge between us. I mean, look, there's, don't call me general. I've been captain of the Millennium Falcon too long. It's right here. It's all, it's in our face. I don't think I can dig my way out of this hole, but you know what? It's Thursday night. We're here. And this is ATG Live. Well, welcome to ATG Live, your home on Thursday nights for everything Star Wars. I'm one of your hosts. I'm Pete Fletzer. I'm joined by Nick Milky as usual. But we got a we got a returning a returning host guest host with us. Whatever we want to call you, we got Chris Ryan's. Chris, how are you, Pete? <laughs> there it is. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> there it is. Uh, Pete, <laughs> doing fantastic. I, Nick, where you at? I'm over on the other side. It's good to see you, brother. <laughs> you too, my friend. Always good to see you. Always so good to see you. Well, tonight we are we have Chris back with us. We are going to be speaking to the wonderful, the talented, the hilarious Kelly Knox, and we're also going to be hitting some news stories tonight. But first, let's uh, let me just get to a little bit of quick house. Actually, before housekeeping, let's do this. Um, Nick, we have a potathon. It's coming up. Ooh. It's pretty close. Do you want to you want to say a we, word or two about Potathon? We I would love to say some words about Potathon, and I'll some say of this, we can't say <laughs> some of them. We are not yet allowed to say. Things are working. It is exciting. Um, Potathon is actually one exact month from today. It is on Saturday, May the fourth. Some of us know that as Star Wars Day. This is our opportunity to raise money for the Make a Wish Foundation. We have a bunch of shows joining us. Around the Galaxy, Bro Axiom, Podcast of the Wills may make a reappearance. We've got all kinds of fun things in the works. Diet of the Force, Relatable Nerds, Yub Nub, Full of Sith, Father Son Galaxy, Galaxy, easy for me to say. Thank the Maker, Tarkin's Top Shelf, and Virtual Cantina. All doing shows. We have some guests that have been dropped. I know you put some stuff out on social media yep. yesterday. Yep. Um, our friend Paul Sun Young Lee is actually going to be joining our friends from ESPN's The... Um, Never Tell Me the Odds podcast and having a great conversation with them. Uh, Matt Martin is going to be back to join us for another year. That's so fun. Yes. And this yes. is a big one. Yes. The man himself, Pablo Hidalgo, is going to be joining Potathon this year. That's the guy that doesn't do interviews. I don't know if people know that, but <laughs> that that's a big score. We're very excited about that. And there's a whole bunch of stuff that we can't oh, announce yes. yet, but is right there on the cusp, on the edge. Um, so Potathon is coming up a month from now on that Saturday. You can go do donate now. You can go to the potathon.com. You can donate directly to make a wish. Um, we're going to have prizes. We're going to have giveaways. We're going to have guests. I know we're working on Chris's show. We're working on all the other folks are going to be involved. So much fun to look forward to a wonderful Saturday of what we like to say. The fandom is giving back and sharing with, you know, families and kids who are so deserving. Absolutely. Absolutely. And Chris, I know we're working on a return visitor for you guys, a guy who is, yeah. he, he's almost as much a part of Potathon as everybody, as everybody who's been there since day <laughs> one. So hey, we're excited. round three, round we're three, I'm ready. Excited to have him back. But before we get to that, I'm just going to, Nick, I'm going to hit the, the housekeeping so damn quick so we can get to the news and get to do it. And I have one personal point of privilege right okay. at the very end before we go to the commercial break, but go oh, ahead and do your thing. Doke. So we, um, 
Make sure to follow us on all your social media channels at the uh, SSW Network. You can also check us out on, well, you're checking us out now on the YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash at the SSW Network. You can also join our Patreon program, which you can find on SS, the SSWnetwork.com for as little as three bucks a month. You can be part of our Around the Galaxy and Podcast of the Wills shows uh, when we do in-depth interviews with our celebrity guests for as little as three bucks a month. Plus, you're going to get swag and discounts on merch. And speaking of merch, you can find find our merch also at the SSW network. And um, I think that's the fastest I've ever gone through the housekeeping. Yeah. I think that's uh, you pretty much down. nailed it. Well, you know, we're getting good at this. This is like three months of doing this four months that's now. Right. So we're totally yeah. in it. We got, uh, it. we do also have a voicemail line. If you want to call yes. and leave us a message, bad batches, bad batches picking up speed. Like there's some Oof. things happening oh. right now. So if you want to talk about Bad Batch, if you want to give us your thoughts, again, if the new episode drops and it's 3 o'clock in the morning and you can't wait to get it out, call 504-321-1501. Leave us a message. We would love to play those on the show. Um, I know we've got one this week from our continuing adventures in Enid, Oklahoma, from (laughs) Matt. Um, But that voicemail is there for you. We want that to be a way that we connect with you. Um, also leave your messages in the chat right now. Lloyd producer extraordinaire is in the background. He is highlighting messages that we can come back to at the end of the show, whether it's about bad batch, our interview with our guest, Kelly Knox, we're excited to talk about tonight. We want you to be a part of the show. And these are some of the ways that we can do that. So please call the voicemail 504-321-1501. Leave us a comment, all those fun, fun things. Um, Pete, do you, do you have time for one more thing before we go to our commercial and keep you know, this rolling? You, you're calling privilege, so you do your thing, man. You, I, you I am calling privilege tonight. <laughs> um, we have a good friend that is a friend of all three of us on the screen. There's a friend of so many of us that are watching whose birthday is today. Today is yes. April the 4th. Yep. 4-4, 2024. Our good friend, Brian Fry, it is his hey, birthday. Brian. He is celebrating. He is in Disney right now. Um, <laughs> I've actually got to hit record on my phone for half a second. Um, I made a deal with him. His birthday is on 4-4. Yeah. So I am drinking four shots oh. over the course of this evening. I have oh. sent him two of them already <laughs> earlier today. <laughs> earlier today. So this already is three two four. Okay. <laughs> Here's to our friend Brian Fry. Happy birthday. Thank Happy you for being birthday. a bright light in our Happy Star Wars Happy fandom Swift and a great Swift. supporter of all the things we do. Happy birthday, and one more may be coming later at the end of the show. I'm sure it will. Delicious. Well done. So business done. I haven't drank in months. I I was like, am I going to drink tonight with these guys? (laughs) I've I've been sober for for a few months. Yeah. (laughs) Well, well as they say in The Godfather, just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. Right back in. Well, we are going to take our first break of the night. When we come back, we are going to get to the top news stories of the week in the Star Wars universe. And then we'll be joined by Kelly Knox, who will be sharing with us some of our favorite Star Wars dad jokes. But we'll be back in just a minute with more ATG Live. Well, welcome back to ATG Live, your Thursday night home for all things Star Wars. We uh, we have conversations, we talk about the news, we listen to what you have to say, we uh, we get a little rowdy, we have a little bit of fun, um, <laughs> and we don't just give you the news, we talk about the news, and I'm so glad Chris is here tonight because there's a handful of stories that I know he's going to have a direct opinion on, but Lloyd, let's hit the news. <laughs> Well, 
Well, in our first news story, the excitement surrounding the Acolyte continues to soar as Entertainment Weekly releases exclusive insights into the highly anticipated Star Wars series. Following the recent teaser trailer, a spotlight in Entertainment Weekly now shines on Daphne Keene's character, Jackie Lan, though through two new official images and a revealing interview. There was also news today that Empire Magazine is going to be dropping more and more information coming soon. However... Uh, she can be seen uh, playing this character, uh, Jackie Lan, who is uh, Jung Jae's Master Soul's apprentice. She shed some light on her journey, emphasizing her admiration for her master and their dynamic. Keen's portrayal promises thrilling lightsaber duels and a deeply devoted apprentice-master relationship. Showrunner Leslie Headland's fervent determination to cast Keen underscores the actress's integral role in the series, with Keen reciprocating Headland's admiration for her vision and direction. Keen delves into the intricate makeup process, you know, she's got little horns and whatnot, that transform her into Jackie, highlighting the character's evolution and her own transformative experience also as i said earlier today empire announced an upcoming issue dedicated entirely to the acolyte as the show approaches its disney plus debut on june the 4th we are all excited to see what's going on chris and nick what are your thoughts on uh, on what we're starting to see on acolyte well i don't have a lot i'll just throw this out there because i really do want to throw this one to chris mm -hmm. Um, I haven't read High Republic. I've been very upfront with that, Pete. You haven't really had read High Republic, you know. I know, shocker, shocker. surprise. Shocker. Um, my irrational bias towards <laughs> comics aside, it truly, it's something I want to do. It is on my aspirational get to it list. Um, the reality is, as a dad and four girls and all the things that I have, in my, I haven't prioritized the time for it. It's an undertaking, man. But I'm thrilled for this series. I want so much from this series. So my question to Chris is, is this a character that we already know or have heard about, you know, from the books, from the comics, anything like that? Nope. And whether it is or is it not, what do you see coming from this story based on the trailer, based on mm -hmm. these images we've got? What do you see coming our way? You know what? Just, just like when it comes to the high Republic where, I, I I hadn't a clue outside of like you know there's just there's this uh this group called the Nihil they they right. help orchestrate the great disaster you know and in this the start of the story and then it just it, you know it went in so many different ways and 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 like so many so many story um <clears throat> story beats that they did that are so different from a lot of things that have happened in Star Wars before um the sky's the limit with what they do I I, mm -hmm. I you know. I, I I haven't even thought about you know where could this 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 acolyte series go, outside of, it looks, pretty dark and then like everything else right. in the High Republic it's just it's not gonna, it's not gonna end either it's not gonna end well or it's just it's gonna be, it's just gonna be like the hardest of times, and um like when we're talking about um I keep calling her X twenty three. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, uh, 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 Jackie Long. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when it comes to her her character and and what she's you know what she's saying like that she's a very devoted master. That lets me know that when when she meets up with with uh, what's the Mandela's character's May May I think. yeah, yeah. May. when those two meet up it's going to and that's going to be um, intense. Yeah, not just the fight scenes but just the tension between them as as because May is is Master Soul's like former apprentice. Yeah, right. And and you know, seeing his you know his, with this new Padawan and 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 how like devoted she is, like she's um, like if I could do a Batman and Robin thing, I, I would say she's like Tim Drake, to um, like she's Tim Drake to Maze Jason Todd slash mm -hmm. Dick Grayson, probably yeah. um, going horribly wrong apparently. So <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing like you know what that clash is between those two between these two uh, apprentice and former apprentice that is that 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 is like the the biggest thing for me well, i think one of the other things that i would add to that and and you hinted at it chris high republic is notorious for killing off characters people begin to love immediately yeah, and it's just and the traumatizing thing, a lot of well, traumatizing moments <laughs> and the great yeah. thing about this series is none of these characters exist before right so yeah we and we don't know so and we we've never heard of them after so Anything can happen, which I think mm -hmm. is fantastic. So yeah. the and only character just... that is that is uh, back from who was in the books right now is Vanessa Rowe. Yeah. So and yeah. she looks like she has seen some 
<laughs> seen some Shit. stuff. That's exactly so, right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Even even being a hundred percent unfamiliar with the books, the comics, the uh, I'm conversational enough to if like I played the game of like, is this a character from the High Republic or not? Like I'd probably get like sixty percent right. <laughs> Vernestra mm. Rowe and what I know of just you know articles and summaries and those kind of things. Yeah. Exactly what you said in the comments from the sh two shots in the trailer. You're like, hmm. That's somebody who's been through some stuff. She's been through some yeah. stuff. Yeah. All right. Well, let's hit our next story. Our next story is in a recent interview with Screen Rant, Daisy Ridley, known for her portrayal of Ray Skywalker, of course, in the Star Wars sequel trilogy, hinted at the potential return of John Boyega's character, Finn, in the upcoming Star Wars film she's set to star in. When asked about it, she said, quote, that's above my pay grade. I would love to see that. I would love to see that. But that is not a decision for me. And while Boyega's involvement has not been officially confirmed, Ridley's very coy response fueled speculation about Finn's fate and whether he could fulfill his journey to become a Jedi. Despite Ridley's reluctance to confirm Boyega's role, fans have long speculated about Finn's return, especially considering his unresolved arc in the sequel trilogy. Boyega himself expressed an openness to reprising the role despite his own disappointment with the handling of his character. As details about the new film, tentatively titled New Jedi Order, continue to emerge, rumors swirl about potential casting in the direction of the story. Um, as of now, New Jedi Order is slated for December 18th, 2026 release, promising an exciting return to Star Wars in cinema. Chris, I know you got some <laughs> thoughts about Jedi Finn. What are we thinking? Do we, it, first of all, let me ask you, I know she's playing coy. We've seen that from, uh, we've seen it from you and McGregor. We've seen it from, yeah, everybody who's returned. PR 101. Do you think me? Me? I'm not in it. They haven't called me. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Liam Neeson. Here I am yeah. in the Kenobi show. What do you right. think? Do you think he's going to be, do you think he's going to be back? Listen, um, full. All right. <clears throat> It'd be nice if, if he came back, but I'm not getting excited because I did that. <laughs> When they showed the first trailer, when we started knowing about Finn for the first time, I'm not going through that whole. I'm not going through my tra my trauma <laughs> oh, with that again. Me. But fool me once, <laughs> fool me twice, <laughs> fool, fool me, me rise of Skywalker. <laughs> we'll see. Um, do I want him, want him to be a Jedi? No, no. Do I want him to be a Force user? Absolutely. Yeah. A, a full full like a. Fully fleshed out force user, yes. Chained to some religion, no. Interesting. Uh, that's just that's I just me. That. I would love to see him as a force user, but not so much tied to the Jedi and all that other stuff. You know, that's just that just starts getting cookie cutter at this point. They need to really expand out with what it means, and they're doing a great job of expanding out what the force is. Yep. What you what those abilities are. What you know, it, just 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 the you know the nature of the force. It's time to expand past these these religions. Yep. And and just you know, someone being a force user and just living their everyday life, you know. And well, yeah, I wanted to be a warrior with it, but you know, I, I think I think you're on something, and I think hopefully that's. I mean, that's one of the lessons that I got from the sequel trilogy is that the force, the Jedi, they like as as Luke said in Force Awakens, like um, the Jedi don't own the force, right? Yeah. And and that's and that's what led to their downfall, which we're going mm -hmm. to see in. Acolyte, which we're seeing mm -hmm. in High Republic. And um, I would love to see Daisy Ridley and Ray kind of bring things back and save it. Chris, what are your thoughts? Uh, Next, what, what are your thoughts? I mean, I want Finn. I want Finn and everything. I am, I feel like I'm lockstep with my brother Chris. Like, Finn got a raw deal mm -hmm. in some of the sequels trilogy stuff. Like, the promise, what we saw. I mean, the first shot we get in a teaser for Force Awakens. <sighs> is a stormtrooper popping up in the desert and it's Finn. Yep. Mm -hmm. And we get posters with lightsabers. Like we get all these things that are going, we're pointing, we're heading in a direction. Choices were made. I understand that. There's a lot that's at work and it's at play. But we have things like the Lego holiday special that kind of bring in some moves of like, yeah, he's being trained. Like, yeah. as far as I understand it, like there's some canon aspects of that. There's some like, it makes sense to me. And of course they're going to play coy. Yep. So-and-so is not James Bond. Liam Neeson's not going to be in the Kenobi show. So-and-so <laughs> is not going to be like, that's PR. Yep. There's a lot of time between now and then. I'll be honestly shocked if we get a Ray movie, new Jedi order that doesn't have Finn. 
and yeah. also doesn't have Poe. Like yeah. I think there's still time and room for Oscar Isaac, for um, John to be involved in these things. Like yeah. we're going to get that. It's going to be a part of it. I want it. I'm ready for it because that is for whatever flaws you may issues you may have with the sequel trilogy. Like those are the bright spots. Daisy, yep. John, Oscar, like that, you know, Adam driver, but th we're going to move past that unless there's a force ghost, you know, Ray, Kylo, Ben, something like that's what it is. So I want it. Of course I want it. And, you know, she obviously wants it too. And I think the promise is, in the story we talked about weeks ago, she said, I was willing to wait until the story was good. Right. She's right. coming back now because she has said the story is good. Mm -hmm. So she knows things we don't. And I hope that that's pointing in that direction. Yeah. All right. Well, I am going to call an audible here, guys, and I am just going <laughs> to do story our, our last story of the night, which is about that trailer that dropped on us from mm, out of you nowhere. Don't say. Yes. So let me pull up my notes since I'm doing an audible. I'm screwing myself up here a little bit. It's okay. It's live. We'll do it live. Uh, do it live. <laughs> Lucasfilm has surprised Star Wars fans with an announcement of a new animated series called Tales of the Empire, set to premiere on Disney Plus on Star Wars Day, May the 4th, also Potathon Day. This six episode miniseries promises to delve deep into the heart of the Galactic Empire, offering viewers a gripping narrative through the eyes of two compelling protagonists. Accompanying the announcement is an electrifying teaser. Holy cow, that trailer was amazing. Wow. An eye catching official poster and a peek at the characters fans can expect to see, including, including, and not exclusively just these characters, <laughs> Morgan Elspeth. Barra Safi, Grand Admiral Th Thrawn, the Grand Inquisitor, and Darth Vader himself. It's described as the second installment in the Tales of series following 2022's Tales of the Jedi. The series boasts a stellar cast and is helmed by the renowned Dave Filoni as creator mm. and supervising director. With this synopsis and this promise of looking forward into the future, Star Wars Tales of the Empire is poised to capture our imaginations. I, for one... Uh, I am surprised as everybody else to see it um, shocked and excited as hell. What do you guys think? What, what did you think when you saw this trailer? And again, cause it came from nowhere today, totally unexpected yeah. and it's coming in like a month. So. Yeah. 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 They, they, they were just like, here you go. Here's a, shh, 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 take this. <laughs> Surprise. And I was, I was cheering. I was screaming watching this thing. I was just, um, so, so like, I'm so happy that they're, that it's not a Jedi story, even though I would have taken it like Star Wars. You know, you know my thing. Hashtag gimme. But um, <laughs> I was, I was just like, just so happy that they are um, rounding out Morgan Elizabeth's story, and that we're finally yeah. getting some um, some story beats for um, for uh, Barra Sophie. You mm -hmm. know, to see what happened with her. So yeah, I'm all about it. Seeing um, like I know Grievous was cool to see, but you know, but we're getting like the the, the novel era. Grand Admiral Thrawn. It wasn't even Grand yes. Admiral then. Yeah, uh, I am so stoked to uh, to see how that relationship came to you know came came to be yep. with those two, and and, and have, what we're going to hear to get us like you know more more of those uh, story beats uh, uh, attached to the Ahsoka series and beyond. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm I'm oh man, maybe maybe there's a uh, if they're going to show the uh, the destruction of the uh, the death you know the death of your witches. Oh. Yep. Maybe we get a little kid Marin. Oh, yes. That would My be so dope. Like I, I I hope that happens. Oh, I would love to see that. And and you had made mention before we even got on the air when we were watching Lloyd watch it by himself for the first time. <laughs> we, that should have been a trailer reaction we should have been capturing. Yeah. You had mentioned <laughs> at this stage in the game, there's a chance we see our good boy Eli, Eli Vanto. Vanto. Man, yeah. I yeah. would love to see Eli Vanto. Yeah, I don't. Absolutely. I don't read a lot of the books in the comics. You guys know that. I wish I did, um, but I did. I, every one of those books I listened to because, first of all, because of our friend Mark Thompson, and second of all, yeah. they're just great stories. And Eli Vanto from you know the Bayou of the Galaxy, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> from my from my part right? of the galaxy. Yeah. <laughs> But I would love to. I would love to see Eli Vanto and and get a taste of. I, I mean, I still would love to see live action long hair Thrawn, but I don't think we're gonna get that <laughs> long hair wild Thrawn. But we, you never know. You never know. 
never know. You never know. It. This is what it did for me. Of course, I saw it immediately. It was like, holy crap! I didn't know this was coming. Right. Immediate excitement. But also, I went. I watched that trailer and went, mm, tonight I'm watching Tales of the Jedi. Before I go to sleep, when this show is over with, I'm going to watch all those shorts again yep. because I don't know that I've watched them since they released originally the first time. And now I'm going, oh, wait, we have multiple series and we know what Star Wars does. You pick series, you build. It all builds one thing on top of another. Yep. And that's so exciting. And to see all these pieces to get the teases of Ahsoka. And you, you know, you texted it to me earlier today, Pete. The voice cast that's been announced. Yeah. Nicholson is doing Thrawn. Diana mm-hmm. Lee and Asanto is doing Elspeth. Like, we're getting uh, Meredith Salinger yeah. coming back as original Barisafi. Like, we're getting all these characters and these voices. Like, this is the thriving keep feeding a star Wars thing that we're so excited about. And again, to borrow a phrase from Chris, gimme, let's yep. go, let's do it. And, and Disney star Wars, Lucasfilm animation is clearly is, failing and dying. It, yes. It, so yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, it's crushing it. Well, speaking of crushing it, uh, we are going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to come back with uh, Kelly Knox, who has not one, but two books coming out uh, exactly. this month. And uh, one is out now, and we'll get to that. Uh, but we're going to take a break. And when we come back, what we is will out have. Now? Is Return of the Jedi out now? No, that's April 23rd. Oh, 23rd. We're almost there. We're right on Almost the there. But we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back with Kelly Knox, we'll be back with more ATG Live. Well, welcome back to ATG Live, your Thursday night home for all things Star Wars. We are back and excited, and we are. You just saw the commercial for Potathon. I'm going to mention that one more time if you're just joining us. Potathon is on May the 4th, and it is the fourth year we're doing it, and we raise money for the Make a Wish Foundation. So head on over to thepotathon.com to get more information. In the past, we've had guests like uh, little guys like Seth Green and uh, some guy <laughs> named Ryan Johnson. This year we have we we have a list of people we can't even talk about yet, but who we can talk about. We are going to have Paul Sun Young Lee, aka Carson Teva, joining us with some of our friends from the ESPN Never Tell Us the Odds show. We are also going to be joined by Matt Martin and the one and only Pablo Hidalgo, who doesn't do these sort of things, but he's doing it for charity, and we really appreciate that. So make sure to join us on May the fourth for Potathon 2024. You can go to thepotathon.com right now if you want to donate. For every $10 you donate, you're going to be entered in to win prizes from Regal Robot, from various saying, publishers. Do you, ha- you do have you, the list, right? Do you right? want me to talk yeah. about those prizes? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Regal Robot has donated some of their vintage Star Wars wooden signs, the Whoa. ones that you, or the metal signs you've seen advertised on their websites, the ones I haven't bought um, <laughs> because I just, I can't, I don't have any more raw space. I can't right. do it. Regal Robot, Danuo Novo. If anybody follows Danuo Novo, they have the do-it-yourself, design-your-own X-Wing pilot helmet. They're designing one of those that comes with the blank helmet, all the decals, all the everything you need to design your own X-Wing helmet. We have books. Um, Inside Editions has actually offered a couple of copies of the Return of the Jedi Visual Archives book, which is super exciting. Pete has it. I know he's grabbing for it right now. Uh, there it is right there. We're going to give some of those away. Um, 2797 Studios, our friends who make all the awesome 3D printed you know, sets and things to go with your action figures. We have, um, we have art coming up. We have more books coming up. Um, I know I'm leaving somebody You're out. You're leaving at the uh, the Lucasfilm prize pack every year. Lucasfilm prize pack. pack. Yeah. Absolutely. So. Our great, great friends who at Lucasfilm who have partnered with us over the last couple of years are going to do another prize pack. There's going to be lots of cool stuff. So for every $10 you donate to make a wish through the at the um, I'm sorry, the potathon.com that link goes directly to make a wish. That money doesn't come to us. We're not channeling it through funneling it, handling it directly to make a wish. 
for every ten dollars you donate, you're going to get an entry into all those great giveaways, and there's more still to come. Absolutely. And speaking of Potathon, this next guest was with us on Potathon last year with Tarkin's yes, Top Shelf, was. I believe. So Lloyd, hit that thing, and we'll bring in our next guest. <laughs> Kelly Knox is with us. Hi, Kelly. Hi. How are you guys? Oh, so good. good. Great. How are you? I'm I'm good too. Had the surprise trailer today. I was all excited. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think of the trailer? Uh it a friend texted me to be like, have you seen this? And I was like, what are you even talking about? <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> I had no idea. I, I'm pretty excited to see everybody uh come back. Like Jason mm -hmm. Isaacs is the uh, Grand Inquisitor, yep. and yep. it's going to be great. It's going to be great. So, yep, very excited. So great. Well, Kelly, for the handful of people who may not know you because they apparently haven't been to a bookstore this month yet, <laughs> uh, tell us a little bit about, about some of the stuff that you do. Uh, I am, gosh, how do, how do I start? I'm a writer for StarWars.com. Uh, I've written some nonfiction books for Star Wars. Uh, my latest one is Star Wars Dead Jokes, and I have The Return of the Jedi. I'm a co-author on The Return of the Jedi Visual Archive coming out uh, the 23rd. But yeah, mm -hmm. I, I just, I'm very happy to say <laughs> I've, I've gotten to write a lot of books uh, for Star Wars and uh, a couple for Marvel now, too. So. And you've also oh, done, you. yeah, the Marvel books. I And the Marvel Monsters book is one of my son's go-to book. He grabs that book off his shelf all the time. He loves that. So um <laughs> Even if it's just like to just look at that. And that's the cool thing about that book. And um, is and in the Return of the Jedi Visual Archive, I remember when I was a kid, my favorite franchise, if I could just look at pictures of it, like I could just spend hours and hours and the, yep. the pictures in the Marvel Monsters and, and of course the Return of the Jedi book and your new book, uh, which dropped, what was it, yesterday, right? Yesterday. Or the day before Tuesday. 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 Yeah, a couple days. The second. Not April Fool's, but the second. <laughs> it almost, almost hit it on It should have been April Fool's. In kind of a, <laughs> I'm surprised you know. they didn't, didn't do it. But yep, Star Wars Dad Jokes. Excellent. So tell us a little bit about Star Wars Dad Jokes. Um, So this book, uh, for people who don't follow me on Twitter, uh, it actually started <laughs> as a series of tweeted dad jokes. I, during lockdown, I... Started tweeting some terrible Star Wars themed uh, puns. So I'd um I don't know how often I've told this part of the story, but when my daughter was in elementary school, from like first to fifth grade, whenever she learned how to read, I would put a dad joke in her lunchbox every day. I would handwrite oh, yeah. and I would just Google it. I wasn't writing them then. I would just you know Google one, handwrite it, and throw it in her lunch bag, and she would share it with her friends at the lunch table. And so I already had like a mental list of of those kinds of jokes mm -hmm. and so it's kind of easy for me to start star star wars fine uh existing you know classic jokes and things like that and so uh when the lockdown hit i was tired of all the doom scrolling and all we saw <laughs> online was you know horrible negative things so i was like i'll just be one one little bit of positivity on somebody's uh, timeline so i made it a a goal to post one terrible dad joke a day. I think I made it like a year and a half or something, a little over a year, I remember. Uh, and, you know, very, very kind people said, oh, this should be a book. And then eventually Lucasfilm said, hey, this should be a book. And they got me in touch with the editor. Uh, and as way of a pitch, I sent a spreadsheet I'd been keeping of my Twitter dad jokes because I didn't want to repeat any and I'm a big nerd so I had them all saved <laughs> up so that was my pitch it was terrible because it was formatted for Twitter but you know they were in uh, so that's how the book came about the book is like 80-90% new jokes even though I sent those over first um, it's almost all new jokes So yeah, I have to say I was impressed as I went through them that I, I didn't find too many although I did find the one that got the biggest groan from my daughter was the, where does the emperor keep his armies in his sleeves? <laughs> that was the first one I ever told. That's what <laughs> okay. it, it needs to be told. And we're going to get to it in a minute because I'm going to ask Kelly if she has a favorite, I'm going to make her pick one. Um, I have mine bookmarked as well. And if she wants to see at what point in the book it is, that may or may not tell her anything. Um, but I have one and Pete, you're going to really appreciate it as well. But Kelly, let's talk about this for a minute. You obviously, like you said, this came during lockdown. This came during a time where, you know, of course, doom scrolling is a thing. You're sending your yeah. kid to school in a world that is, 
you know, struggling and dealing with a lot of difficult stuff. You've written a bunch of other stuff. You've done craft books. You've done Be More Obi-Wan. Like, talk about the process of writing this book other than, of course, like you said, your spreadsheet, which I love. Um, the process <laughs> of writing this, putting it together, you know, what it meant as far as who you are as not only a Star Wars fan, but as somebody who has the opportunity to do this kind of writing. Uh, you know, so it was a definitely a different process because uh, most of my other books are heavy in research and this one was you know basically all me there is reading you know tons of other jokes to kind of get the idea to get you know what makes a dad joke a dad joke you know has to be <laughs> has to be clean because you're gonna right. tell your kids it has to have a good pun <laughs> uh and it was always important to me to make sure i'm never and the same with online i'm never making fun of star wars like it's always yeah. out of love it's always yeah. you know that kind of attitude. So those those kinds of things were the only research I did. But then when I was actually writing the jokes, it was it was a very interesting time because, as you might have guessed, with me having three books out this month, I was working on <laughs> three books at the time, the time right? and yeah. so I would have to uh, like switch mental gears. But I did uh, I did okay, I think. <laughs> uh, but with most most of the puns, I would start with maybe an a few different things, either a character or a character name that's funny. Hmm. Poor Admiral Akbar got probably the most jokes told about him because <laughs> I just think yeah. he's hilarious. Um, or like an idiom, like I said, like uh, like Yoda being swamped. Like if you think about something, be swamped. Can you? How can you turn that into a yep. pun? Like that kind of was my thought yeah. process. So, and then then I had a list of characters I wanted to get in. You know, beyond. Poor Admiral Ekbar, which is where I got lucky enough to get uh, Dr. Afra in there. And I wanted yep. to make sure to have a few about Ray in there, too. So nobody was was left out. So, yeah, it was a very different process. Not as much research heavy as I've, I've done in the past. So I think it's a little scarier because it's all from me. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Um, and, and it is such a fun thing. And I'm going to pull mine up just because I can in this moment. Um I have a favorite and I've read through this whole thing. I was so thankful to get this, get this book sent to me early. I've got the cool postcard. Um, oh, there's was, a postcard? Was, yeah, I got, I yeah, got they, a little postcard. Yeah. From yeah, Chronicle. Publisher sent us a oh. couple of postcards. Yeah. yeah they yeah. sent me a couple of cool little postcards. <laughs> That's cool. So, but, but I had to save it and it's this one. How did director Krennic discover and recruit <laughs> Galen Erso to finish the Death Star? He was outstanding in his field. <laughs> the layers to mm. that joke mm. are like it's it's chef's kiss. Like it's so great. It's just it's one of those things that that's what a dad joke is. And as a dad myself, hit me right in. You know my Star Wars feels, my dad joke feels. Um, it has to feel good. Certainly, you know when you get that feedback from people who are tagging you online connecting with you with some of that same kind of stuff um, to, to get that, to come back. Like, is that fun to feel those kind of bouncing back at you? Yes. So the most fun is when I hear about parents telling kids and kind of trolling their kids with them. I just love that <laughs> so much. I don't know, maybe that's just a parent thing. That's my favorite thing. No. Uh, I love when people tag me in their jokes, like, if this is my legacy in Star Wars, you know, I'll take it. <laughs> if other people tell more jokes instead of, uh, you know, being angry or adding to their doom scrolling too, I'll <laughs> gladly, gladly take that. But yeah, most most happiness for me from this comes from hearing how they can make their kids' eyes roll or, you know, get the good <laughs> groan out of them. I think that's, I just think that's the best. My daughter's immune. She's used to, yeah, she's, <laughs> she's like, whatever, point. whatever. <laughs> So, so uh, have a lot of fans, uh, Miss Pundababa, have they? Been, um, <laughs> oh, oh, oh no! <laughs> yeah, like so, have a lot of a lot of fans been like hitting you with with their with their own like dad jokes, like just to get your approval because you are the queen of this. So, I just <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I get tagged in quite a few, like, uh, has Kelly seen this or Kelly needs to see yeah. this? And I'm always uh -huh. like, yes, I did need to see this. Thank you for tagging <laughs> me. <laughs> but yeah, that's one of my favorite things, actually, is to see other other good gags online. I love it. That's great. Very cool. So maybe um, give us a little bit of your, your Star Wars history. How did you get into Star Wars? And um, when did it sort of, like like strike you that it's something that you you love 
Um, so I'm very old, and I saw <laughs> the Return of the Jedi in the theaters. Ooh. That's the first movie I remember seeing. Okay, so that means um, I'm very older. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, it's it's in my memory. I was six years old because the uh, the film strip broke. Because I don't know if, if everybody knows, but back then it was a physical film strip that could break, and it yeah. ours did in the middle of the uh, Ewok stealing the speeder scene. So that <laughs> moment is burned forever in my memory. So that's my um, earliest Star Wars memory. Mm. And then wait, well, had... wait, wait, when did when did it break? Because this happened to me too. <laughs> no, really, when yeah. uh, Paplu steals the speeder bike in Return of the Jedi, that's when it it snapped. The film strip snapped. I think yeah, mine was during. I think it was Luke and Leia's. Speeder bike chase. That's when mine happened. And it stays with you. Twice. I don't know how. Yeah. It happened twice. The other time is during uh, the fight between old, uh, Vader and Luke. What? That is awesome. Yep. That oh. is awesome. They must have been running those projectors hot, maybe. Oh, for yeah. Constant. Just constantly. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's my earliest memory um, of seeing Star Wars in the movie theater. I don't know if I saw the ending ever. I don't know if they like taped it back together i can't remember that <laughs> much but um the one we would watch it over and over again on like vhs tapes recorded off hbo um mm -hmm. since you couldn't really watch the movies like on your phone then i had to listen yeah. to the soundtrack over and over and that was how yes. i would watch it in my mm -hmm. head and so that was kind of if that's still t to me i can still watch a new hope just by hearing it from mm -hmm. those days and so i think that's really when you know my my fandom started because if I was sad or scared or lonely, I would just put on my headphones and listen to the music and feel right. like I was there. And so I've, I've still always had that kind of special safe feeling, I guess, with Star Wars. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where it started. Um, mm -hmm. But back then, girls weren't really supposed to be into Star Wars or talk about Star Wars. So it was a very private kind of thing, fandom mm -hmm. for me for a very long time. Uh, it wasn't really until college, I think, that, you know, I finally put like a poster up on the wall or whatever. Uh, fast forward to, you know, I started working. I had a career in community management and I ended up on Star Wars Galaxies. And that was my first Star Wars job. Mm. <laughs> uh, but then I quit to be a stay at home mom, but I was still freelancing. And that led me to StarWars.com and to where I am now. So. It's a long winding story, but there's the a little music, bit of Star well, Wars along the way every every it's, step. <laughs> it's so fantastic. And I want to hone in on one thing because you talked about obviously those earliest experiences being Return of the Jedi and the speeder bike and the tape breaking and all that, which is such a great full circle moment because now not only do you have dad jokes coming out, but you are one of the three authors who worked on the Return of the Jedi Star Wars Visual Archive. Mm -hmm. And we had just like, and the uh, we said this last week. The only reason you weren't on with us last week with Clayton and SD was because we already had scheduled to be on this week to talk about <laughs> that joke. But you were the other part of that triad, you know, putting that book together. So you got to work on a Return of the Jedi visual archives book, and you've done kind of a variety of things. You've done craft stuff. You've done be more Obi Wan, which is very inspirational. You've done dad dad jokes, which is very silly. And then we have Return of the Jedi Visual Archives, which is certainly like archival work. So talk to us a little bit about certainly a movie that had a big impact on you, but getting to work on a book that delved, you know, so deeply into exactly that same movie. Uh, yeah, that was not not lost on me that my my earliest memory and I now got to work on the kind of book that I always love. Like mm -hmm. like you guys said, when you're a kid, the ones that you can just open up and start flipping yes. through and learning about characters like that's why I love working in nonfiction, because those were the things that I liked reading as a kid. And um, so for Return of the Jedi, the visual archive, this was the most um, behind the scenes type book I've worked on. Everything else has kind of been like uh, characters, things like that. And so this one was really fun to work on and learn about the real life people mm. behind the book. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, getting to draw the connections, which I'm sure Clayton and ST probably talked about with, with y'all about how, you know, Return of the Jedi would establish things that in Star Wars that, you know, we're still exploring now. Things like, you know, it went from Jedi, Return of the Jedi to Ewoks to Night Sisters in the Ewok movie. And now we just saw today the Night Sisters <laughs> coming yeah. back for, you know, Tales of the Empire. So it's really, it was really fun to trace those kinds of things. Um, and every every project I work on is a lot of fun, but this one was uh, 
I guess not not more meaningful, but just a lot more pers personally interesting to see how the people who worked on it got the the movie made because I feel like all three of these they were just flying by the seat of their pants and it's, it's still I still appreciate every <laughs> second of these movies that we did get knowing now how hard they worked on those. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Did it, did it change the way you looked at that movie? Certainly as somebody who grew up with it, who connected with it, certainly in an early on specific way. But like we asked Clayton and ST last week. And of course there's that thing of like, yeah, you know, you go back, you revisit it that many times as you're writing. And there's a moment where you need a time out. Was that your situation or, you know, did it even give you a deeper appreciation? Um, there was a lot of things. So I don't, I don't get, I used to say I would get Star Wars out when I worked on Star Wars Galaxies. That doesn't happen right. anymore. <laughs> Maybe now because it's just always, it's always there. Right. Um, but uh, I did learn, I learned a lot of things I didn't know about Return mm -hmm. of the Jedi, things that um, like I didn't even know you could still find out. Like I remember uh, I learned about the women who filmed uh, as pilots in the cockpits yeah. for Return of the Jedi, where they eventually got cut. But you can watch their scenes, their deleted scenes right now on Disney Plus. Like you can yes. literally go to the, the extras right now on Disney Plus and mm -hmm. watch them. So stuff like that that I discovered. Uh, scenes that I'd never you know seen before, interviews I'd never read. You know, I think there was a the earliest script meetings with George Lucas that I had read, like all that stuff was just so much fun to, uh, to dive into. And it was just so, it was stuff that I didn't know and stuff that I wasn't expecting that it kept the whole, the whole process was pretty fresh, even though it's a movie I've seen, you know, a hundred times. Mm, for sure. Chris, oh, um, you guys haven't seen it. It's like textbook size. Oh yeah. <laughs> I was really surprised when I saw it. <laughs> I, d I did my, um, I did a little uh, TikTok and YouTube short review of it, a little one minute review. And I started by dropping it on the table because it, like, <laughs> when I heard it was coming out, and, you know, I've, I've known Clayton since I've been doing this show, and, um, and I heard he was involved in it. And then he was going to be on the show, and they sent me a copy of it. I was, I get this big box. Huge. And I was like, what's going to be in here? Oh, it's from the publisher. Holy cow. It was. <laughs> And yep. what I love is there's like little like fold outs and and yeah. like my favorite thing in the book is the the fake Polaroids of the uh, the character uh, the the um, the the costuming from Endor the, the so the 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 recreation of those Polaroids is fantastic so it's really good stuff fantastic and and as I told Chris uh, Clayton and St last week and I will say it to you because it's important that you hear it. I've been collecting Star Wars books since, you know, as long as Chris and Nick have since that was all we had. As you said, you know, the right. story of Star Wars, you know, record. This was my way to keep up with Star Wars. Um, and those books were were the other way. And mm -hmm. this book deserves to be on the shelf with every one of those. It's such a it's such a great collection of all things Star Wars, especially Return of the Jedi. But it's it looks good and it's just a fantastic I I put the link to, in the chat for people to pre-order it. I can't urge you enough to pre-order it. Go do it now. Yeah. So yeah. um Chris, I'm sorry. I, I feel like I cut you oh, off. There. No, it's all right. It's all right. So like so you've written a lot of books, like of course like the Be More books and you know craft books and stuff for starwars.com. Um what other types of books would you like to tackle? you know, Star Wars wise or, or otherwise? Um, so I'm not a fiction writer, so I would never say fiction, <laughs> but what I would really like to do is kind of, um, kind of a combination where it would be like an in-universe, maybe nonfiction reference book, which I think they've done oh, a couple wow. times. I think there was a High Republic one they did. There's one, um, Ralph McQuarrie did a long time ago called the, uh, Illustrated, where is it? It's on my shelf. The Illustrated Star Wars universe, where it's all written in in universe with all of this mm -hmm. yeah. art. So I think I would really like to do that one time. One time on Star Wars Galaxies, they let me write some in uni in game in universe stuff, and I was just like, I was <laughs> thrilled for like months. I was so happy, and so <laughs> I think stuff something like that. I would be really happy. That was probably be as close as I could get to writing fiction. So I think that would be really fun. So well, you're, you're, you're not a, you're not a fiction writer. Have you tried to do fiction? Have you do you know? I think I, I'm I'm just like I my very first writing job was a technical writer, and I think that okay. just kind of, which was terrible. I wrote about like software databases, so I think that kind of <laughs> just like determined my writing path. But I mean, it's, path. it's a great <laughs> skill set to have because, uh, like I said, that Marvel Monsters thing is 
is it gives Best you the clothes, right? <laughs> yeah, but it's got that. It gives you the information that you want to know, and it doesn't need to be a, a story. It's this is because, like I said, as a fan, just you know, tell me how big this monster is and what it does and why it's you know where it showed up and and who who it fought and all that stuff. It's really really cool stuff. So yeah, yeah I like that one because it reminds me of what I used to stare at as a kid was the X Men trading cards in the nineties. Like oh, I had yeah. the binder and I would like pull out every card and read their little stats, <laughs> power graph, and all that. You know, I love that stuff when I was a kid, yeah. and that's that's why I like what I do now because I like you said. I hope that you know some kid somewhere likes to pull out one of my books and flip through it and look at the monsters and think. Well, there's certainly, I guarantee you there's one, and he's probably just down the hallway right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, it's so great. And Kelly, it's always so wonderful to talk to you. It's always so wonderful when you have a new book coming out, when we see you on social media tweeting out another new joke, not even ones that are in the book. And like we said, like people are just throwing them at you at this point. Um, before we get out of here, certainly tell us where everybody can find you, where they can order the books, not only dad jokes, but visual archive, all that good stuff. Let us know. Cause we want everybody to check all those things out. Cause they totally are worth it. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, you can still find me on Twitter at, at Kelly underscore Knox. Um, I have three books out this month. They're all on Amazon and all the other big retailers. That's dad jokes, which is out already visual archive, which is out. April 23rd and the same day I have the Marvel Studios character encyclopedia. Wow. And like I said, I was working on all three of those at the same time. So mm. <laughs> you need a break. Are, you things are interesting. <laughs> I had to switch a lot of mindsets. And then at the end of the year, there's a big uh, updated Star Wars encyclopedia coming out so that I got to help uh, be part of the team with that on. So keep an eye out for more information on that. Otherwise, you can find me StarWars.com with crafts and interviews. And yeah. Always so great. And I just have to say, you're such a positive light in this fandom. We're so mm -hmm. thankful for you, your <laughs> smile, the happiness that you bring, because we know there's nonsense out there. We know there's people trying to drag it down. But those of us that truly love Star Wars, truly love this community, you're one of those people that help remind us this is what it's all about. And that's what we're fighting for is something we love, which is star Wars. So thank you for being a leader in that. Thank you for hanging out with us tonight. And we can't wait to see you again sometime soon. Thank you so much for having me on tonight. Thanks Kelly. This was thank great. You. Well, we'll be back with more ATG live. That was a ton of fun. Always great having uh, Kelly Knox with us. She's uh, she's been with us in the past. She's uh, she's been just uh, and Nick, you you nailed it. Like she is a very positive voice in the fandom, and yep. and yeah. it's just like there's and it's funny. I I have been one of those people that's like, has Kelly seen this? Because they're just <laughs> yep. great things to have. Um, and and the groaners. My my daughter who already is officially decided that it's not cool that her dad has a Star Wars podcast. Um, this book has now given me ammunition to just have it the ready Load them up. at any time. I can just say, <laughs> what do you call an Ewok sneak attack and end around? I love that. I love. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and <laughs> there were so many jokes in this thing where I don't know about you guys. I don't know if you ever heard of your life's camera, you know, like, like you hear something, you just got to just no matter where you're at, like it doesn't matter where you're at. It just, <laughs> it just catches you right there. <laughs> yeah. And there, there are so many, like what was one of the, uh, uh, one of my, 
favorite to this thing. All right. Where does the emperor wash his hands when he's on Mustafar? In the lavatory. <laughs> <laughs> like like Macala Brown broke. Uh, just just saying that one, and then as I look into my life's camera, and like it, it's it's yeah, I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> That's great. Well, uh, thank you everybody for hanging out with us. If you're watching us on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button. Make sure to join us every week, every Thursday night at eight o'clock. Next week's guest is. Ash Crossan from Entertainment Tonight. She's going to be hanging out with us, so you are not going to want to miss that. If you're watching us on Twitter right now, and I know a lot of you are because I see the numbers on my screen, a ton of you are watching on Twitter, make sure you are hitting uh, that follow button there on ATGCast, which is probably where you're watching this right now. So glad you could join us. But go on the YouTube version and subscribe over there because we pop up every now and then. But speaking of popping up, let's talk about what you had to say as our audience. Lloyd, let's get to intercepted transmissions. Where are those transmissions you intercepted? Producer Lloyd in the house. How you doing, Lloyd? What is that in your hand? I have to My ask. Little dreadnought. <laughs> okay. Totally wrong fandom. But... <laughs> hey, if it's, if it's keeping <laughs> it you calm, I built it. I painted. I'm proud of it. Leave me be. Okay, like, it's, <laughs> it's my fidget toy. Um, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna do something real quick before Lloyd gets going on intercepted transmissions. Yes, we did have a request, and we had something that I agree wholeheartedly with. We also want to throw a shout out to Johnny Sampson. Who oh. did the illustrations for this book? Oh my Here's gosh, a perfect yes. example. What do you call a gloomy droid? A Wobot. Like <laughs> these drawings, these illustrations, and all of this, the cover itself, like Vader with all the, oh my God, you can't believe I said that. <laughs> um, there's so many things in this book. It's not just the jokes. I was looking for another. Oh, here we go. <laughs> this is a great one. What do you call a Tuscan's jokes? Sand up comedy. Like, <sighs> These are the kinds of things you show up for. <laughs> Kelly's pulling the jokes together. Johnny Sampson is pulling these amazing illustrations. And it's that kind of art that's just beautiful. Like, And it matches the tone the, perfectly. It's... It absolutely matches the tone. Like, It's so worth it. I'm telling you, if you haven't gotten this book yet, it's out now. Go get it. Amazon, wherever you get your books from. It's it's the best, and like there's tons of jokes in here. Like this is so fantastic. Yeah. It's absolutely worth every drop of your pennies that you get, because we need that kind of positivity, you know, in our fandom, in our lives. Absolutely. So check it out. Kelly and Johnny did a fantastic job. It's so so good. And and right now on Amazon, it's five star reviewed, and it's actually it's on sale for thirteen dollars and forty six cents. It's the best thirteen dollars and forty six cents. It. Best you thing can, you'll do today. You can spend. I guarantee it. So excellent. Well, Lloyd, did we uh, did we get any any good comments? Anything uh, in, in the chat? Or well, I know we have a call as well, and yes. we're, we're also <laughs> going to hijack this a little bit because I we haven't talked about Bad Batch at all this season, and this week needs to be talked yeah. about. So we're, we're going to talk. Some yes. bad we're going to we're going to get to some Bad Batch, <laughs> but let's start with. Uh, should we start with our call? Um. Two things. First. Okay, yes, um, yes. A friend of mine actually told me a very, very um, weird joke about Star Wars, ironically oh, enough. Okay. I, I hope you're all prepared. Is it? Is it? Know. Is it? Uh, <clears throat> all right, go ahead. He, uh, he said, what do you call a nursing crate dragon? Uh, what? what? A milk crate. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly just wow. left the studio yes, and I she know missed she that one. That's and then two, if y'all yeah. want to actually experience Star Wars Galaxies, one of her first projects, it is available. Yep. Um, it is a fan-made mod. They actually brought it back from the dead. It's called Star Wars Galaxies Restoration. It is fantastic. Oh, I um, absolutely want to do that. Totally free. You don't have to pay yeah. for it. You can support them on Patreon. Highly recommend. Um, but cool. all of the original content is there. So if you actually want to see her, you know, when she was younger working on it, that's where you can. So, that's really yes, cool. Please. Um, cool. <laughs> really cool stuff. Um, all right. So we got a, um, call from Matt. Yes. Um, that's when I'm going to hit that. Hey, fellas, this is Matthew Nenis. Hey, um, this week I, I took my son to the doctor on Tuesday. And while I was waiting in the waiting room, one of the drug reps, came, drug, drug reps, I can't talk this morning, came out and I was talking to him and we were talking. I asked him about Star Wars and, 
I knew it was bound to happen sooner or later. Um, he said his kids love Star Wars, blah, 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 all this. And then I kind of blacked out for a minute because he said, I said, who's your favorite character? He said, without without hesitation, he said the unspeakable name. Ooh, barf, Kylo Ren. I said, ooh. I kind of blacked out for a minute. And then I said, I guess that's cool. He said, well, why do you make that look like, why is that look on your face? So I explained to him that the unspeakable one, Han Killer, killed my childhood and did horrible things to Han Solo. And we don't speak of that incident. So, uh, he thought it was kind of funny. I didn't think it was kind of funny, but he thought it was kind of funny. So, there's a drug, drug rep in Enid whose favorite character is Kylo Ren. Ew, that made me about throw up. Han Killer. So, um, there you go. Um, that one took it out of me. So, it took me a couple of days to recover. So, uh, take it easy. Han Killer can kiss my ass. All right. Bye. Gotta, I never if, know what uh, to expect. Uh, uh, if there's an anti Raylo, it's gotta be it's it's mad for me to Well I I yeah. think that I think that, that dirty uh Greedo killer had it coming. <laughs> oh no <laughs> nobody's ever said Han Solo had it coming. Man, we got worse to be fair. Actions here. We talked about Brian Fry earlier. Holly Fry is the biggest Greedo lover we know. Like we're we're creating all kinds of, you know, different Star Wars drama, not the nonsensical <laughs> You know, angry basement dwelling idiots <laughs> mode. Right. We're talking about like Greedo versus you know Han Killer versus whatever. Like <laughs> it's everywhere. We're all over the map. Yeah. Uh, that's wild. I, I love Matt's stories, and I love that Matt just like <laughs> he's Going sitting in it. the doctor's office. We have to we have to set up a, a Dropbox so he can just do this on video. Priority. Yeah, he's got he's he's a star. He's gonna be a star. Uh, <laughs> Lloyd, did we have any comments that we wanted? We had two, actually. Two good ones. Okay, cool. Yeah, one is is from Matt, of course. <laughs> uh, let me let me pop this uh, bad boy up here. My my, did it go? It did not. There we go. There okay, my first attempt at asking a random person about Star Wars this week failed while getting uh, gas at the station. I asked the guy across from across from me about Star Wars. He said, "I don't watch kids shows." I just laughed. <laughs> uh, he he probably also missed the Bad Batch this week too. <laughs> I, I was. was I feel like. Did he stop my wife? Is it possible that he was the one that he talked to? I think he was just mad because he was putting ultra instead of regular into his car. <laughs> Come on now. The price difference alone for that made 92. his heart stop. Yeah. Kid <laughs> shows. That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> and then uh, we had Jeff. He has resurfaced. Jeff Qualio. Yeah. Back yeah. He uh, is. Fam, long time no see. He can't stay, but I just wanted to hop in and say I love and miss you all. My hashtag weird space friends. Hashtag I don't know what that is. That's me. That's, oh, all right. That, it, it's at various points on social media and videos. I have referred to my dumb, dumb face. So he, he is taken to calling me on occasion. Nikolai dumb, dumb face, which I feel okay. like could be my wrestler name. I'll take it. <laughs> Um, but yes, Jeff, one of my hometown homeboys lives here in Montgomery, um, has been working, doing some extra stuff, you know, doing his fam thing and hasn't been able to tune in on Thursday night. So great to see him. Great to get a shout out and, you know, much love to my man, Jeff. That's awesome. That's great. Well, thank you everybody for your comments tonight during the show. Thanks for hanging out with us on Twitter, on YouTube, or wherever you're watching us. So great to see you joining us every Thursday night. The numbers keep going up. We uh, we need some more subscribers. We're almost at a thousand subscribers here. Nine eighty, Pete. Nine hundred eighty. We're so close. We can do it. But maybe the reason we aren't there is because we're not talking enough about current That's Star it. Wars stuff. So why don't we talk a little bit of Bad Batch? Okay, so this week's episodes episodes. Yep. I know Nick, Nick, you have you have probably an unpopular opinion, but I, I'm gonna start by saying and then I wanna get I wanna get Chris's opinion and then I wanna hear your unpopular opinion again. I don't know if I wanna hear it again, Nick. Yeah, it's fine. But but, but <laughs> this this week my tweet immediately following with no spoilers was I don't watch the Bad Batch because I don't watch uh kids' cartoons. And I wrote that that's being that's the quote attributed to everybody who's missing some of the best Star Wars storytelling, period, 
bar none. Chris, how did you feel? I know it wasn't Scar Squadron yet. No. But, <laughs> but <laughs> Pete, we know yes. it's coming. <laughs> Come on. Oh, the victory lap I'm going to do. <laughs> this, I mean, what was wrong with these two episodes? They were family friendly. They were lighthearted. <laughs> what happened? What happened? It's just kids in prison and they're being tested. Jesus. And, and you know, you got you got to get, get Omega growing up, you know, way before she needs to be growing up and giving herself up to the empire so that it's, so that they don't we all thought that that planet was going to be the place where the clones oh. could, could could live in peace. Oh my god. And I keep telling people, nothing outside of Palpatine, nothing that happened outside of Clone Wars was good for anyone except for Palpatine. Yeah. No one listens to me when I No. <laughs> I, I have to say it's one of the rare times. Now normally like look, I, I even did the, the joke a couple weeks ago about the uh the trailer reaction stuff, like the big oh or like you know making noise and, and but brilliant. If you haven't watched uh Bad Batch yet, I'm sorry we're we're going in the spoiler territory. When Crosshair missed his shot Oof. as it's go as it's setting up I'm like this is what they've been setting up for. He's finally going to overcome his shaky hand and he's nope. going to, oh shit, he missed. And as soon as it's one of the rare times where I literally went, oh my God. Like yeah. I literally, I, I made noises from my throat about what happened in that. And, and it was just, it, it everything worked in those two episodes. It, everything, it was the best two episodes of Clone Wars, of Clone Wars. Well, Clone Wars, sure. Yeah, Clone Wars uh, of Bad Batch, um, which is all connected. Some of the best stuff that we've seen uh, yes. to date. So, yeah. But, uh, Nick, when I texted you that on Wednesday morning, <laughs> actually, before I texted you that, you gave me your opinion. I did. And I was, I was like, okay, I, I got to talk about this on the screen in front of other so people. So here's my thing. Yeah. And this is where I struggle with having critique or content, whatever it is, whatever we're going to call this. I'm not a hater. I love Star Wars. I'm in the Chris uh -oh. Ryan's camp of give me. I want every bit of Star Wars you're going to send my way. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to like I'm going to like it. Yeah. And I don't buy filler episodes. I don't buy like there, it's so hard for me to vocalize exactly where I am, how I feel. Yeah. But the bottom line is of these two episodes this week. Yeah. The first one, I watched it going, we know, we know they're taking kids. <sighs> we saw it in Rebels because there's the episode of Rebels where they're taking kids and they're doing things. And like, I know it fleshes it out. I know it adds weight to the story. But I wanted the second episode. I want, I'm re I know. And it's because I'm too deep into this, it's <laughs> because I'm too involved in Star Wars. That I, yeah, I know all the horrible shit that they've done. I'm ready to see how are we going to deal with this? What's going to happen to Omega? What's going to happen to eventual Scar Squadron? What's going to happen? Like, that's where I am. So I'm not even saying they're filler episodes because I don't buy that. I don't yeah. buy, you know, the whatever. <clears throat> it's just a, it's a very weird in between, in between place to be to be like, it still feels slow. I know it's not slow. It's emotional. Mm. It's gorgeous. Like the shots of Tantus, those outside exterior shots before they cut in to Hemlock, who's a horrible piece of shit. Like <laughs> he needs to have that, a painful, <clears throat> slow death. Immediate neck punches constantly for like hours on end. But I have that little tied up moment where I'm going the first one felt slow because I know that's what's going on. I'm ready to find out what's happening. May I? Yes, please. please. By all means. Um, that episode to me was like, hey, do you uh, you think the Empire is cool? <laughs> Here, watch this. Let me know what you think afterwards. Yeah. Tell me, yeah. tell me where you are. Yeah, that that's that's what one of the things I got from that episode. Very it, much like we saw in Andor, right during the torture scene yes. in Andor. Yep. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so my whole thing is there's no part of this that I dislike, but there's that part of me that's like, I'm ready to get there. That's where I am. And that's a tough in between place to be like, I love all of it. I'm going to rewatch it on top of Tales of the Jedi tonight yeah. before I go to bed. I'm going to rewatch both of those episodes from yesterday. Yeah. 
I don't dislike them and I didn't from the start, but I'm like, I feel like I know, I already know, obviously this is what the Empire is doing. I'm ready to get to the point where I go, oh, this is how it turns out. I'm ready right. for, I'm right. ready for the resolution. That's where yeah. I am. Like, like, you know, since episode one, I've been like, there's Scar Squadron. <laughs> <laughs> line them up the first episode so i i understand that you want to get to that yeah. spot believe me i've been yeah. waiting three and a half seasons or two and a half seasons it's, it's... your resolve is stronger than mine that's really what the moral Listen, if, of the story is if they if they don't do anything with scar squadron in this series just don't come looking for me <laughs> don't ask chris any questions you don't want to bait and switch it. Do not talk to me. Um, Just move on. I will yep. try to have like some kind of a move comeback along. for you. Move but, along. Uh, I'll be like, nah, we'll, we'll, we'll find out in the comic book. <laughs> but, uh, you know. Lloyd, what about you? What about these last couple episodes? What hit, pings, didn't, whatever? Um, Yeah. Uh, it was a lot. I'm going to be honest. It was a lot. Right. A lot to take in. I just um really liked how when the Marauder exploded, you saw the gonk droid get oh hurled with a shot put. <laughs> and I thought that was hilarious. My two um, I have to say, my two favorite uh, reasonably priced Lego builds have been <laughs> the Marauder. The Marauder. And the freaking Razor Crest. Yep. I, I blame Hal Hickle. I know he has nothing to do with uh with Bad Batch. I don't think he does, but he made it acceptable to blow up people's favorite ships. To blow up Pete's favorite ships. Pete's do you want them ship. to be screen accurate? <laughs> Throw them down the stairs. <laughs> if, the, if the ghost blows up in Ahsoka, I'm out. I quit Star Wars. <laughs> My other favorite no, thing. No, it can't. It can't because it's it's in the Rise of Skywalker. Right. Oh, it makes right. it. That's right. right. Yeah. 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 The rest oh, of you. Thank God. Yes. Yeah. Um, Scorch. Wait, wait. Yeah, they said his name. They did. Yes. Uh, he has always been my one of my favorite commandos. Um, he was hilarious in the game. That's where I fell in love with him. <laughs> They're really making him into a dick bag, and I hate it. <laughs> yeah. This guy, this guy I just need, no I, I need the other members of Delta Squad to come out of nowhere. Yeah. I need Boss. I'm getting the Italian New Yorker fingers. All right. I just need, <laughs> I need Boss to come out of left field and just knock him one right upside the head. Aren't they all just a-holes now? Like every Republic commando outside of um, Gregor. What's his name? Yeah, Gregor. Yeah, Gregor. Not all of them. There were like a couple of them aren't, but most on of them the show, yeah, not on the show. No, mm -mm. Right. so Gregor, <laughs> he's insane. Um, yes. at this point, like he's nuts, but Literally I think insane. no, because the Karen Travis novels got retconned. Yeah, okay, maybe I think Gregor's the only one right now. Hey, it, uh, so yeah, when the ship was destroyed, and I'm glad they didn't do a has lab for that like two weeks prior, <laughs> <laughs> um, to blowing up, um. Is Gonky, is he gone? <clears throat> he's not oh, there. No. Gonky has to be okay. He is. He's on the dock after the scene. Oh, he yeah. is. Okay. Yeah, he's there. Okay. Yeah, he's fine. He just got hurled like a shot put. He's fine. Yeah, he's a gone. That, that was that was an, a <sighs> legitimate immediate concern. Yeah, <laughs> I need my power bank. It's a power bank breaks. I, yeah, yeah. No, he's fine. He was on the dock in the next scene. Okay, la last question before we wrap up the show, based on this last episode, because there's a lot of talk about it online. Um. Can we all just agree that Tech is dead? Tech is dead. He's gone. He's not. He's not yeah. CX two. No. And I know people are saying, not. "Oh, they made a big deal about the goggles." And the reason they did, in my opinion, as a storyteller, is because he's gone. It's yeah. the tombstone. Yeah, I think he's gone. Chris, Chris is Chris, disagreeing. Chris I can Chris see it on his face. <laughs> yes, he's gone. Okay. <laughs> but I'm pretty but. sure they've got some DNA somewhere that's going to be repurposed, and that is Mike. <laughs> That is Scar Squadron member Mike M I C K E Y. Right. I bet you that that's like off the Clone Rebellion. My God, please, please <laughs> let me be right on this one. So, so they have four episodes left. We have two hours left. Where are we going to see a Clone Rebellion? Here's the problem. I will say this one more one time too, and and it's a, it's a bad take, especially because it's a lot of my friends out there, and I hope I don't piss anybody off. But so many people who have apparently gotten the preview screeners are out there. Yeah, I want to throw some of my thoughts out there, but I'm afraid somebody's going to accidentally be like, well, you'll see. And I'll be like, oh, they ruined yeah. it for me. So I'm not saying anything online. I'm not saying anything on Twitter. I'll say it here. But man, um, so are we going to get do you think we'll get a clone rebellion? Do, I mean, I don't I think we're that's got to be the breakout, right? I mean, they're going back there to break the clones out because Omega feels guilty and they want to get all their friends out. 
that's going to be your clone rebellion, right? It's got to be. It's got to. Uh, yeah, but I, they, they, these clones are not going to be at their best. Right. Right. They're already aging. Yeah. yeah. So these yeah. shitty, you know, stormtroopers can. Uh, and I don't know why oh. they changed the, uh, the, 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 you know, their armor. That should have just been their armor. Yeah. You know, but you know, seventies. But um, <laughs> yeah, I, I think yeah, we're going to have. Cause they've been talking about it. You, you you can't talk about it that many times throughout the season and not right. You know, uh, uh, enact it in some way. Uh, Especially if you show like, off high profile characters like Cody. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and well, yeah, you know, well, and I love that happen. it continues to do the thing that we've talked about, which is Star Wars is so good at doing a thing here, picking a thing back here twenty years ago, and finding ways to fill in the gaps. Whether it's yeah. Tales of the Jedi, Tales of the Empire, in Rebels, we get Rex, Wolf, and Gregor. They're on a planet. Yeah. They're on the walking whatever the hell. We get <laughs> yeah. the clone trooper that's in Obi Wan panhandling on the street. <laughs> Like we get the opportunity and if there is a clone rebellion and these clones get liberated and they go off to live in the galaxy, whether yep. it's cut and Sue with whoever it is, like we get all these different characters that end up somewhere. They're not just conscripted stormtroopers that we get in, you know, Star Wars in 1977. There is a transition. There is a hard line of how it got from this place to this place. And these are those things that plant those seeds and build exactly what that looks like. There's clones spread throughout the galaxy, but they're not talking about it because they don't want to get taken out. Right. Uh, so much to get to in the next three weeks of episodes. Yeah. Um, three weeks, four weeks, four weeks of episodes. Are they doing another yeah. double drop? Because they've done it twice already. I don't think so. I think it's a single yeah. from now until May 1st. Four May 1st. Until, yeah. yeah. May 1st is the last one. Well, Guys, I'm going to, uh, before we get out, I know, Nick, you have to do another uh, shot for your friend Brian. You made <laughs> I do. Our I'm, Brian, I'm hitting, you made, you made I'm the, hitting uh, record on my phone. Okay. You are our friend Brian Fry. This is number four on 4-4. Four four. Happy birthday to you, my friend. We love you. We appreciate you. We love you and Holly both for all the things that you contribute to Star Wars, to this fandom, to Podathon, to podcasting. And just being a great friend. So happy birthday. We're thrilled to celebrate you. Cheers and happy birthday. Lucky for Nick, we are at the end of the show. And this is fourth shot. We're we're good to go. Chris, go. tell us what's happening on Bro Axiom. Well, um, I, I had a couple weeks where I did a couple interviews with uh, uh, some comic book writers. Uh, Mark Menarden, who is doing the mm -hmm. uh, Mace Windu comic right now. And it's really good. Yeah. Uh, I, that's up on our, our channel right now. Uh, I just... Um, did one with Ethan Sachs. We're talking about the Django Fett book, uh, cool. and that's up. Um, <clears throat> shooting the Poodoo is going on. I, I, yeah, I think we have an episode this weekend. Um, BX Gaming is 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 running wild, brother. Like you know, they're doing pretty good on their Tuesdays. <laughs> a couple days a week at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah and it's, it's going real well. Star Bros uh, are 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 killing it, and they, you know they they have some new episodes coming up. And then we're um, finalizing something, you know, for for an interview with Kevin Scott for them. Nice. So, um, so yeah, so look forward to that. And uh, next week, some more comic uh, previews. So, yeah, and and uh, we just did a new comic preview uh, this past week for uh, Star Wars number forty five, which is the second part of the uh, trial of Lando Calrissian. Uh, so we're getting to yeah. see um, how he, you know, becomes that general that we see in um, in Return of the Jedi, and and this one was. This issue in particular was like a, a good turning point for his character. And awesome. uh, so that's something that a lot of people need to read. Like uh, like Nick and I, maybe. We'll yeah. Probably get yeah, we'll check that you one know, out. Listen, if you love if you love Star Wars, you know. <laughs> if you're a real fan. You are in there. possession of a comic. Well, that's I, a plus. No, look at that. that. Yeah, that's, that, that is so far from current. Hey, it's, it's, it's even dark horse on the back better. of it. Wow, Superman yeah. versus Alien on the back. That's yeah. nice. That's uh, yikes. That's, uh, uh, yeah. Lloyd, I know you're doing some twitching. Um, where can people find you? Angry Tasty Cakes on Twitter, caffeine, on Twitch, man. right? Man, that's a medical. Uh, yeah, I'm on <laughs> Twitch. Yeah. He's I'm on Twitch.tv uh, slash Angry Tasty Cakes. Uh, if you want to see old man yells at clouds while playing Call of Duty, that's where you find me. Um, we're gonna start. Um, my mod and I were going to start branching out into other things. I'm thinking about doing a Warhammer stream ooh, once ooh. a week, once a week as well. Uh, nice. That's where little homeboy comes from. Nice. Yep. And um, that's a happy story right there. 
Oh yeah. <laughs> so oh yeah. Everyone's terrible, but for their own reason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you want to blow up a planet? Why? Because it's inconvenient. <laughs> All sure, right. Why not? Um, Let's do it. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so yeah, we're going to be branching out into that, hopefully, and then um, I'm also going to be doing uh, another run of um, Jedi Survivor as well. Nice. Uh, we're going to see how that goes. I'm going to play it on the hardest difficulty. Oh, well, and, uh, you know, the radar <laughs> and, tag and is what, probably going to end me. Yeah. And whenever he yeah. wants to really get to old man yells at people and things, that's when he'll start playing Fortnite with me. So uh, listen, I have been an open <laughs> schedule for this. OK, <laughs> let's go. All, All right. right, call it. We'll make it happen this weekend. Let, let's Sunday. get that, and let's let's get let's get my son on there, and he'll kick both your asses. Oh, he'll beat the shit out of both of us. No, <laughs> probably. Doubt. I don't play Fortnite. I do the whole. <laughs> uh, That'd be funny. I have Mandalorian. I don't know if that counts as anything. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. Kind of that damn game, but yeah. Well, so that's where that's where I'm at. Cool. Well, uh, before before we go, with so many people watching on Twitter, if you're watching us on Twitter, just for my own edification, just so I can do a little bit of market research, if you're watching us on Twitter right now, just leave a quick comment in the tweet that you're watching it on, uh, just so I can, even if it's just a hi or go F yourself, this was horrible, whatever it is, <laughs> I'm fine with that. Just let me know what uh, that you're watching us on Twitter, because it seems like Twitter is where people are catching us now, which is really cool. And, and let's drop one more okay. final reminder before we get out of here. Potathon, yes. one month from today, Saturday, May the 4th. May the 4th be wish you benefiting the Make-A-Wish Foundation. There are, you can go to the potathon.com. You can go to the Potathon Twitter feed. All of the money goes directly to Make-A-Wish. We don't handle it. We don't hold it. It goes directly to them. That's the best way for us to do this. But we have Pablo Hidalgo, we have Matt Martin, we have Paul Sun Young Lee, and we have a bunch of, and I'm not being hyperbolic when I tell you there's a bunch of cool stuff right around the corner that we're about to announce as far as guests, other shows, things that are going on. Can't wait for people to check it out. So May the 4th this year is like the you know culmination of like everything star wars like if the universe right. is going to end it may be on may the 5th i don't know no, i'm um, fine with that i just have to with my dog Can may the 4th has all the things cool that are happening including potathon for make a wish we would love for you to check that out support it and tune in that day so yeah lots of smash things to that goal to. for sure absolutely absolutely um and i just realized when you said that nick when it, we since we're using this sort of uh moniker of may the fourth be wish you yes, um, i kind of feel like that's what you sound like after four shots we're trying to say may the fourth be <laughs> <laughs> well, i've got i've got three quarters of one left, so let's use that to wrap up tonight all right well Go to the no. test on sunday night during Fortnite. how about that exactly <laughs> for old go. time's sake chris may the fourth <laughs> <laughs> See, who's drunk <laughs> now pete chris may the force be with you always <laughs> just one more round friend then homeward bound friend don't forget me in your dreams just one more song friend and then so long friend the nights get shorter it seems just one more rhyme, friend. Yes, it's a crime, friend. But you know time, friend. Time can fly. So it's good night, friend. Good night, but not goodbye.